Hi, I'm Tyler Tebbs. From the time I was only a few months old, I have lived in the same house in Enoch for all of my schooling. I went to preschool at a preschool that was just a few houses down. Here I made friends, primarily with the kids in my neighborhood and others that would end up in my elementary school. From kindergarten through fourth grade, I attended Fiddler's Canyon Elementary. It is on the north end of Cedar City, and I would call it a suburban area. I loved my teachers there and was always eager to try new things. In fact, on the first day of school, I wouldn't even let my mom take me because I was so eager to finally ride the bus. My fifth grade year, Three Peaks Elementary School was built, and I had to transfer to go there. A lot of my friends were transferring too, but I didn't end up in the same classes as them. At first, the school wasn't done, and we had to share classrooms with neighboring schools. But by the end of this school year, we had all of our facilities. It was still a weird year. Afterward, most of my friends were homeschooled, so I started middle school at Canyon View Middle School without having any close friends. My freshman year, I attended Canyon View at Success Academy. My freshman year, I was so busy with sports, music, and the accelerated curriculum at Success, I decided I wanted to pull back and have a little more social experience. So my sophomore year, I decided not to do Success, but to continue with the Honor, AP, and Concurrent Enrollment classes through Canyon View. Canyon View is considered one of the poorest schools in the state, but outside of that, we had a fairly normal Utah population. Most of my classmates were white, straight, LDS students. I happened to fit in in most of the school's population. Uh, we had a few foreign exchange students from European countries or East and Asian countries each year, but the most dominant racial diversity would have been the students from the local Paiute tribe or the Hispanic Latino descendants. I think the largest impact on a minoritized population would be the racial jokes. Those were common and even shared by the minoritized students. I would say my greatest source of social capital was my grandpa. That probably sounds interesting, but nearly all my teachers who are from Cedar City or went to SUU knew my grandpa. He was well respected for being a professor of mathematics at SUU. From this came the idea that because I am a Tebbs, I must be good at math. This continued even into college. A few of my math professors were hired by my grandpa and had a good relationship and respect for him and his family. Because of this, there has been an easy and natural connection with people that also brought a little bit of an expectation to be good at math. With my ideologies being similar to the dominant majority in my school systems, I was very awkward in talking about ideologies with those that may not have the same views. This was because I didn't want to offend them or make them feel like I was pushing my ideologies on them. I believe that a lot of my ideologies were developing throughout my schooling as I observed others that were in the same organizations I was and based many of my standards from their actions. This became very confusing and detrimental as people in organizations have differing opinions on their ideology. After high school, I served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which led to a great opportunity to discuss, understand, and further respect other people's ideologies. I think it is very important to create an open environment where students can share and be respected about their beliefs and be curious about their classmates' beliefs. This has led to a strong belief in the principles of reality pedagogy. I've also witnessed in practicums students who are suppressed or shamed for expressing non-heterosexual orientation. This poor response further excluded the students instead of making the class a welcoming place. While I am generally passive, I believe that by setting up active cogens, as described by Emden, it will allow the students to feel they have the voice they need in the classroom and help correct my biases that I may not be aware of. I have also witnessed several teachers respond to the question, when will I ever use this? By saying, on the test and in college, 
This is a terrible response because several students don't care about their test and don't care to ever step foot in a college. Instead, I want to pursue a reality-based pedagogy that allows the students both to research their personal questions and ground the math content into their personal life. Math is around us daily, and I find it a necessity for students to be able to recognize how math impacts their life on a daily basis. This will require knowing the cultural background of my students and their aspirations, so I can use my classroom to help them achieve their life goals.